everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> and Silver Quill. Ah, rock up, 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 rock Wow. Thank God that I don't have my hypogrief translator on. Unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> for me, I had. Oh, yep. oh dear me. <laughs> Oh, dear me. How much? How much? That bad? Well, here, I'll, I'll translate for you. Dear sirs, I find this upcoming tale most egregious in its presentation. I would, I would like to discuss it forthwith. <laughs> Tell ho, then. Can it's, I, a, it, uh, it's a very guttural language. Oh, my God. I, as you can imagine, guys, I don't think I'm the only one who doesn't want to stop talking about this. Uh, we, we, uh, we should jump I all over the place if we can. I really oh, don't want. To. I want to talk about this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. gosh. I want to hear you talk about this. Actually, I could, you know what? You can, you guys listening. You can do either of two things. One, keep listening and listen to Silver's awesome dissertation on the comic, or you can stop watching and go watch Silver's review of it because no. he pretty much took every single nail and hit it so hard that he went through the the wood plank. No, James, I mean, never do that. Never do that. Don't never tell our listeners to not listen. Guys, keep what? listening. What? What? Keep listening. <laughs> okay, if you listen want, go. <laughs> And go watch Silver's video and then come back to get even more opinion on that because yeah you want to know mo- you want to say more about this comic don't you Silver? I have so much to say not <laughs> just about this comic but about the fandom my insights into said fandom. Oh yeah yeah. Okay. I shall walk a fine line. It's not my goal to judge other people for having an opinion, heaven forbid, mm-hmm. but merely to give consideration. Uh, personally, I have so many bones to pick with this comic that Dr. McCoy is going to have to change his nickname to Muscles because <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, uh, in, yeah. in case you guys didn't figure out, we are going to be talking about issues 25 and 26 of the main MLP uh, line uh, published by IDW. Those are written by uh, Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price. And uh, they're titled The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies, parts one and two. And uh, I want to say something be- before uh, we ahead, before ahead. we clearly start. Um, here's one comic that all of us, well, technically me and James, I'm not sure about you, Silver, are not looking forward to review. And the funny thing is, it's written by Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price. So what's wrong with that? Like, it's the perfect combo. Like we've we've said before that Andy Price, Katie Cook. Awesome. Whatever they touch is going to be gold. Uh, yet this one is like, I'm not. I'm, I, let's I, let's I, not get ahead of ourselves, Norman. Let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 But no. Uh, okay. I think we should try and follow our, and I make emphasis on the word "try." Mm-hmm. Uh, our usual structure: talk about the what the story is about, and then go page after page. Yeah. Synopsis first, then. Yes. Okay. So we have. Uh, the main six arriving to Rancho Bronco uh, in the uh, in, in train, and when they get there, they discover that the town is being ransacked and attacked daily, almost by a pack of bulls uh, who want to take over the ranch. And in order to do that, they try to scare the people out. They they uh, basically bully the town into submission. To the point that the sheriff gives up, and in that case, Applejack is the one who has to take care of sheriff duties. Uh, what follows is a lot of uh, legal jargon, uh, paperwork, slapstick that doesn't really add up, and it... Uh, God, I can't do this. <laughs> I, I can't do this. I cannot do this. I don't. Th- I never thought I was going to have trouble trying to pinpoint the plot of the story. But it re- it, when, as, you're, as you're saying it, you really realize that it doesn't make any sense. <sighs> uh, I'm sorry, cool. Silver. Silver, you are gonna have to take care of this. I can't. Uh, alrighty. Well, as he as he says, there's lapsticks, hijinks, impersonations. They gag an innocent pony. Uh, and tie them up in the back, our heroines, ladies and gentlemen. And in the end, the ponies win for confusing reasons, and Twilight, who has been holding herself to inaction, no magical intervention, uh, 
suddenly use, finds a loophole to use magic. And so our heroines go away. The There is no resolution to Applejack's uh, great-granduncle Chili Pepper, the ranch's owner who is missing. And no one seems to give that any voice. So you're kind of left, did they forget or do they just not care? And so what we are presented with is a story where our heroines put a lot of limitations on themselves. And it seems like much of the plot is contrivances to empower the villains who in an average day wouldn't stand a snowball's chance against our heroines. The biggest problem with... Uh, uh, should we speak about the things that we like and then we focus on the problems with the comic? Yes, because please. Because I, 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 I think it's the best way to uh, talk about the things that are, that are good. Let's, let's talk about the things that are good and then we can focus on the issues. Yep, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let, let's try to find every good thing that we can. <laughs> yes, I agree. Let's go for it. Uh, um... Alphabetical order, then? <laughs> yeah, inverted alphabetical order. In that case, Silver, you go first. Oh, sorry. What I, what I like most about this comic? Mm -hmm. uh, well, on one page in the second issue, uh, it's at the very back. Uh, it says, end. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Which means it's over. Uh. No, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I and here I am trying to tone down my uh, my excessive criticism, and then Silver is like, I don't give two bucks about it. <laughs> Bam! Ah, let's okay, let's let's be super serious now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Andy Price, Andy Price is my favorite artist for these comics. Combine him with a Heather Breckles coloring, and they do a phenomenal job. The mm -hmm. desert looks has a nice palette. It has very earthy tones with blue mountains in the distance for great atmospheric perspective. The ponies are vibrant. Uh, even the town ponies themselves have a, have a pretty wide palette of uh, colors. Uh, there are ones that are dark violet, darker than twilight. Uh, there are pink and blonde. Uh, some are gray. Sheriff Tumbleweed is a nice design. And Pinky's facial expressions when eating a Wendigo chili pepper are truly memorable. <laughs> And even the bulls, after they've been lit on fire and doused in syrup, not in that order, <laughs> they are actually very terrifying. Okay. So that you'd get the sense that they are strangely unstoppable, uh, despite the fact that they were totally stoppable at one point. And expressions remain the strength of it. I will also compliment that in the second uh, part... With Longhorn away from the bulls, his sort of bumbling uh, stooges are able to just be funny. And it's light, more lighthearted, more Looney Tune slapstick. For some, that's actually a negative. They don't like seeing the bulls reduced to humor when they're supposed to be a threat. But I like that they're not, that Longhorn's the, the core threat, and the others are able to be a little more flippant. And then there was the end. Mm -hmm. Where it just said end, end it, uh, and then it ended. Thank well, God for that. As for me, I would like to say, well, I would like to say that the art is well, like Silver said, uh, Andy Price and Heather Brickell color combo are awesome. Like his work or his drawing here is pretty good. I, I like the whole art by Andy Price. There's, from the very beginning, I have no problem with his work here. Like, there's... How do I put this? Um, sometimes he may get a bit lazy or a bit in a rush at some point, but hey, to me, I still enjoy it a lot. And colors... Yeah, still awesome. Color shading, everything and whatnot. It's really good. <sighs> what, what else good can I say? Um, lighting is really awesome. And... Uh, that part where the fire was looks really good. Really, really good. But other than that, uh, well, <laughs> uh, oof, like, oof. anyway, James, what about you, my friend? Well, um, shoot. Aside from the things that you guys said, that um, I agree with Silver. I really like that word end at the end of the comic. It's, it's lovely. Um, <clears throat> I like the beginning and that it is it drags you in really quickly in like the first two pages you already feel like you're in a western mm -hmm. and the 
the way that the camera is set, the 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 camera angles, those those long shots, the uh, three quarter shot is like it is it is shot like a like a western. If this was a, uh, this could be easily taken as a storyboard for a western uh, movie, and you can just re, uh, re resuscitate Sergio Leone, uh, bring him back from the dead, and have him shot that. A, a movie based on this uh, frame by frame, mm-hmm. um, and I, I also really liked Applejack in it. Mm. And the only reason why I liked Applejack in this one is because everyone else is horrible. Everything was not that bad. Everyone else is terribly written and uh. terribly characterized, meaning that the one that is still at least a bit into a uh, uh, character is the one that changed the most and she's not even though she's not entirely in it at least they can appreciate that she's still uh as loyal and faithful as applejack should be mm-hmm. and that's about it i really cannot say anything else that i liked about this comic but i will go further as uh, uh we are reviewing it oh. and in that in this case we're going to start going uh, page by page and yeah. in some cases, panel by panel, because I'm going to predict this right now, guys. Mm-hmm. This is going to be one of those hour and a half long reviews, oh, God, no. uh, or like almost one hour long reviews, where the... <laughs> we're going to harp on every detail. But that's right. because this comic kind of like deserves it. Oh, boy. But before we do start, uh, here's a here's what I want to say. Like this is what I wish would have happened. Kind of deal where I I know this is not our mantra where we wish this would have happened instead of. Um, what we are given, but honestly speaking, I, I just had to uh, get this off my chest. Where oh. on page six, where we see the sheriff with the shading really well covering his eyes, I thought he would be the bad guy for this story. And on page seven, nope, nope. Yep. I thought the I thought the same thing. I was like looking back, I kept thinking, I wish he'd been. The bad guy issuing issuing orders to Longhorn and Company, <sighs> but uh, I guess we'll I can save that for when we give our overall yeah, impressions or yeah. alternate alternate yeah. stories. Mm. Let's let's go for that. And now let's go hip deep into spoilers, everybody. So okay. if you haven't read the comics, if you haven't read the comics, good. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no. If you haven't read the comics, stop here. Um, uh, go read them, and then come back and listen to us but (laughs) if you heard all the buzz and you're not convinced about reading the comics then uh, just keep on listening Mm -hmm. okay so we start with uh, like we said the main six arriving in the something similar to the Friendship Express even though it's not the Friendship Express it's the 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 one train that we saw in Obra Barro because it looks really old Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a train of ponies hooked up to it (laughs) It's actually running on its own. Maybe they ended up figuring out the steam engine <laughs> after yeah. all these years. Renovations, the budget. <laughs> yeah. Or they found a, a, a pack of AA batteries and that that to the train. I heard it doesn't work if you don't put those in. Batteries not included. Include Hasbro. Include Hasbro sound effect in here. <laughs> But uh, they arrived to Rancho Bronco, uh, to, uh, to Cantor Creek. I was saying this wrong. They arrived to Cantor Creek, home of Rancho Bronco, and they meet up with uh, the sheriff. And uh, like this whole, pa- these two, three pages, I was saying that they do get you into the atmosphere and to the environment, but they are also really dialogue heavy. Like mm-hmm. they're almost kind of like I have to reread this again in order to catch up with the story, um, uh, kind of deal. Uh, well, it's I, I do call the train the Exposition Express. Anytime you get the ponies sitting on that, they will inexplicably start talking about what they already know. It happens <laughs> in the show. It happens in the comics. Yeah, it, it's there's in fiction. There's a a phrase that means the death of your story. <laughs> Whenever a character says "as you know," oh. that is the clear sign. This is for audience <laughs> exposition. And I wouldn't tell you what you already know. <laughs> so, James, as you know, we're on the MBS show, which is a show that does uh, comic and episode reviews. Wow, Silver, I didn't know that. Thank you for telling me that. Did your audience get that? Yes? 
Are we good? <laughs> We're good. Okay. Let's go. Okay. And now, this... as you all know, this is sarcasm. Because <laughs> this... I think you're... Because I think you're that stupid that you can't tell what's going on with your ears. Ah! And, and as you know, we're buying up time so we don't talk about this comic. <laughs> well, no, it is, this is something that the show has done as well. I mean, that was the first 10 minutes of that in Daunt in a nutshell. Mm. <laughs> yep. Like, I, I, I like that episode a lot, but even I will admit that that was very poor storytelling. Uh, uh, for me, it was Pinky saying, we're all going to the Rainbow Falls Traders Exchange. <laughs> Just like, Pinky... They know. They're on the train with you. Well, Pinky, for, for me, when Pinky does that, it's like, yes, Pinky, we know for the hundredth time. <laughs> well, but I, I, well, I was never when, uh, you know, normal people doesn't speak like that. <laughs> As you know, James, we're not normal. <laughs> normal. I'm going to push him. Now you have me speaking hypogriff. Well done. <laughs> ah. Anyway. But I didn't know. I didn't know that about your family. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. As oh god, we are definitely dancing around the issue because we don't want to talk about this comic. <laughs> but as uh, they establish, uh, Applejack's uh, uh, uncle is missing, and they don't know what is going to happen to Rancho Bronco. And after Pinkie Pie eats one of those chili peppers. And um, they meet up, talking, talking, talking. They talk about this new guy. Uh, actually, no, no, hang on a minute. I have to go all the way back to the beginning of the comic. And I mean, from the very beginning. I have to bring this up. Let's talk about the cover for a moment. Oh, okay. Let's oh. talk about the cover. Yeah, let's talk about cover version A, the one that was drawn by Andy Price. Yes, mm-hmm. Twilight in Bed reading a book of villains, monsters, and ne'er-do-wells. Yes, yes. Let's talk about all the villains. Now, this is probably one of the coolest covers that was uh, that was made for for the comics, except for one thing. Now, y- you have all the villains here drawn by Andy Price, and it's it's brilliant because you have Chris Alias looking so intimidating, Discord is uh, uh, Jack the Jack Jack the Ripper, yeah, the Diamond Dogs, Night the Rarity, all that, and then you have Longhorn. And I don't know if it's just me, but Longhorn looks really dorky. <laughs> well, like, technically, he looks like he doesn't. He looks like he doesn't belong. You have all of these badass villains, and then there's him. <sighs> well, okay. Uh, here's the thing. Technically, when you put Longhorn up against the A-class villains like Discord, for example, no, no. Let's go for Diamond Dogs, for example. Uh, they're more threatening than he is. Well, that's not fair because. But anywho, um, Longhorn is not that scary of a villain. He's violent. He's not. That's it. That's it. He's violent. Yeah, he uh, has a muscle. He doesn't have the charisma for uh, for an intimidating villain. Hmm. Well, I didn't. I never found the Diamond Dogs in, intimidating for personality. They're they're idiots. Yeah, but I mean, they, they hide in the shadows and they jump out at you. Yeah, they're they're the unseen in the dark if they want to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or they play a really game, re- really strong game of whack a mole. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, but, uh, but, but Lo- Longhorn is not an A class villain. But I will say the jackalope up in the corner does look right terrifying. Oh no, man, he, he's yeah. even scarier yeah, than that is, that is yes, that is actually the point. Is like you have all of these bad guys, and even the jackalope looks even more sc- scarier than than Longhorn. What is Longhorn doing there? So. That might be the the biggest problem with uh, it, it's like it's funny. I never found something that actually has issues right from the cover. Um, but okay, that was a little excerpt. Uh, back to where we were. Um, we now know that there is uh, there is this Longhorn guy uh, mm-hmm. assaulting uh, Cantar Creek, and he is ransacking the town. And speak of the devil, right on the next page, he shows up with his uh, gang of. Bullies or <laughs> bulls or whatever oh, you want yeah. to call them. I like to call them bullies. Oh, yes. Twilight was so proud of herself calling them bullies. <laughs> One thing I need to <laughs> say before we start uh, going past this page is uh, the wanted poster for Longhorn, his reward is just 500 bits. And I, I got no idea how equestrian currency is, but taking a look see at that and comparing it to the world of One Piece... That's not much. 
Well, pi- pirates chump, uh, chump bandits all the time. Uh, well, still, even... Sorry, Trump bandits. There you go. Uh, well, still, even 500 bits, like... Yeah. Yeah. I Although think they... Trixie paid more for the Alicorn amulet than that. Well, yeah, do yeah. that. But now, great, now I've got his uh, lo- thinking of Longhorn standing up on a ship press saying, I'm going to be king of the bandits! <laughs> I'm the king of the creek! Woo! Oh, gosh. <laughs> but, yeah, we get the introduction of our villains, and, ah, god damn it. I think I'm going to have to speak about the, villain, the villains now. Uh, okay. If you... If you saw uh, Silver's review of uh, of this comic, uh, my opinion of he, of these villains are, is similar to him in that, uh, yes, at first they seem uh, they seem like a fresh addition because we haven't had a villain that is like uh, that is completely irredeemable since Queen Chrysalis. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, this is the first time that we have a villain that is actually evil and that is okay to hate. Uh, because the first thing that he does is just push Serial, the, the sheriff, against the uh, against the, the the side of the saloon, and I'm like, this guy is clearly a bad guy, a bad, bad, bad guy. He's like, he will be like one of the villains in um in a rated R movie if he was allowed to go even more more over the top, because there is nothing that you can redeem of him. And I think that is probably a bad tone to go to when the comic is supposed to be a light-hearted adventure for children. Because villains of this type, they usually get their comeuppance, uh, perhaps falling onto a blender and dying nasty. Yeah, it I mean, is clear that they are not going to give a nasty death to a character in a children's comic book. Here's the thing about this kind of character, like Longhorn here. He, he's the type of character where if in other fictions, this this let's just say a Bruce Lee movie. This kind of character, he, Bruce Lee would just kick his ptukas in the first few scenes, and he'll swear revenge on Bruce Lee, and th- those kind of situations. And uh, he does do bad things to Bruce Lee's friends or girlfriends or whatever. And in the end, they have that climactic fight where that bad guy either um, perish or gets a big owie. Can I just say I'm impressed that you use the phrase tukus? I've not heard that in conversation in some time. Yay. Yeah, I'm surprised as well. Norman, did you actually fall off your time machine this time? Probably. I still haven't you... got past that previous issue. Uh, that, that Not the hardest thing was really awesome. He's, oh he's, t- he's taken a tukus. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking a tuk-tuk. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, like... Um, <clears throat> The way they introduce uh, Longhorn, he's clearly not a guy that you want to have on your side. Hell, he's a guy who doesn't, doesn't have any sides. He's the bad guy. And, of course, what do they do? Well, they, Applejack goes to him, confronts him, and she wants to throw an alicorn princess to her. <laughs> and then, oh. well... Okay, Silver. This is... Uh, your, uh, the, she, uh, Applejack wants to take an alicorn princess and throw it at the bulls. I'm going to take a, a hypocrite reviewer and throw it at the comic. <laughs> so, because this Whee! is your territory. <laughs> this is uh, your territory. You, you are better worded than I am. You're going to say everything that is wrong with it, and I guarantee you I'm going to agree with you. So, this is your time to shine. Go for it. Oh, my time. My time is now. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start with Applejack, because I agree she is pro- she's the character who comes out looking the best in this comic. Even though she was so hypercritical of her great grand uncle and his lack of common sense at the beginning, the minute she knows that Rancho Bronco is vital to the town, that it's the product of a, her kin's work, saving Cantor Creek from these bulls is her personal quest, and she's giving it 100%. But she starts off by being completely out of character. The big criticism a lot of people have of Applejack is that it always revolves around her stubbornness, that she won't accept help from others. And it's all about her letting go of having to be in charge uh, in order to accept help. Here, she is hiding behind Twilight, in essence. She might be standing up to the bulls and going, I'm not scared of you, but she's only saying that because I've got an alicorn princess here. (laughs) And then... 
Son of a gun. Twilight lets her get battered across into a barn. Or is it a shed? Either way, I think Applejack, it's a barn. Yeah. Applejack hits the hay, literally. <laughs> and Twilight just peeks in to say, Oh, I can't I can't hurt them. They're non magical beings. Uh... And this is a, this isn't like fighting a Hydra, which apparently it's okay to make that thing feel pain because it's a monster. <laughs> And, and so Applejack rightly calls her out civil, we gotta be civil, they hit me and the only thing the ponies say is that <sighs> Fluttershy says, oh that was very unkind of them and Rainbow Dash is just standing off to the side and watching this, like what are they doing in here? So, Rainbow a punch was thrown you are good at punching maybe mm-hmm. you should try punching the people yeah. who punched your friend yeah, but, you kicked a you kicked a dragon in the face, Rainbow. What is that holding was, you back? No, yeah, it's just the, the Rainbow. Come on, a call to action, Mustache. Uh, but no, it, it's Twilight who's coming out the worst here because uh, there are so many implied meanings. Okay, I, I I talked about you know the Hydra can't feel pain. Well, that's not what I saw in feeling Pinky Keen. I in fact I distinctly remember the comedy was based on it feeling pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But let's take this a step further. The idea is that it's okay to use magic against monsters. They considered uh, Iron Will a monster. Would we have been okay if Twilight zapped him? I don't know. They, they thought, yeah. Zuc- they thought <clears throat> Zakura was a villain or not of Equestria. She's not a citizen. Yeah. She's not from around here. She's doing something scary. Imagine if the episode ended, Twilight thinks Sakura's cooking apple bloom, bursts in, and you just see a light flare inside Sakura's <laughs> hut. The end. You know, that almost happens. Because if you remember, she wouldn't have been able to use magic because her, because her horn was floppy. So mm. it is, it, that could have happened. It could have happened. Yeah, so... not, not, only, not only that, but it also, it also implies that, uh, uh, yeah, like, yeah, Twilight will be like, oh, technicalities. And because you bring this technicality, you will now start questioning everything around it. You know... That, that, is, that is the worst part of, of, of that, possibly. Yeah. 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 And, this, and this is my thing. Just from that first panel, we haven't even gotten to the whole equestrian citizens thing yet. There's this horrible double standard implied by Twilight's philosophy that it's not okay to use it against... Uh, non-magical beings or but if it, you're a monster oh then i can mess you up with with a clear conscience yeah, but remember back in a while when the comic first came out and i tried to at least uh, convince you guys where oh it's true because um twilight using his oh, sorry twilight using her power abusing or abusing her power uh, to zap zap uh longhorn here is a, an abuse of power because, well, well he is... He, uh, give me a second, I, I want to finish this. Um, okay, he is okay. a citizen of Equestria, blah, blah, blah. And you guys pointed me to the pirate arc. That's what I was going to do- talk about, yeah. yeah Twilight then, was very happy sapping those ponies to tell them where the map was. Yeah, and, and then oh, from that point that on... was okay, right? <laughs> from that point on, I couldn't defend it. Like, what? Uh, uh, yeah, la- yeah, I, that... <sighs> And yet, uh, some fellow fans have defended that. There's like, oh, those weren't equestrian citizens, and oh. that makes it okay. I mean, yeah, like, oh, they were sentient beings. They were speaking and talking. Now we were talking about that. Tyrek was also speaking and talking, and he was sentient. How many blasts of magic energy did he got to the face? Over nine thousand. Uh, yeah, like if we are, if we are starting to talk about what is morally right, that whole fight at the end of season four was. It was horrible. If you're starting to like consider this, you're taking the enjoyability of something that didn't have any technicality until now, and all for the purpose of nerfing Twilight. Yes, this, the whole the whole core of this is a contrivance that Twilight can't can't solve this right away. That we have to make this a two parter. And going into this, well, no, rather looking back on this. I get the sense that Katie Cook was kind of put behind the eight ball. <laughs> Someone said, we haven't had a, a, an arc which featured all of the main six lately. You know, we've, we've kind of broken it up a lot. 
So we need to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but so what villain are they going up against? The Wild West villain? Well, hang on. There's this really powerful magic user in the party. This would be over in five seconds. I ha- We have to figure out a way for her to not end this conflict right away and stretch it out over two issues. Okay, we'll put in this ethical code. I feel like this is an attempt to keep the story going, but it comes at the great sacrifice of a character and her likability. That is also the issue with this uh, with this comic arc is that, and probably not not only that, but also an issue with the show itself. The only way that, uh, when anytime there is something related to Applejack, and Applejack has to look good, the only way they can make Applejack look good is by making everyone around her look bad. Mm-hmm. And you know the the thing is like, Silva. I think you said this in your review when. Twilight ascends and becomes a princess. Uh, she didn't take any responsibility or responsible role as a princess. And any time when she goes out in public, nobody treats her as a princess. They treat her as normal Twilight, except for Twilight time. But in this one, we don't even see Longhorn acknowledging Twilight as a princess, or at least, yeah, at least acknowledging her as a princess. Like the pirates, at least they did acknowledge her as a princess and well pirates being pirates want to kidnap her although they the, although they had to be told while it was a princess i, just, I love that yeah, but, she's got wings and a horn you half wits yeah but okay um, <laughs> with that one um, news is scarce, uh, scarce when you're in the sea but this one in a town where well, news is kind of easy if you're ransacking and stuff because mails newspapers whatnot yeah, like if the mail arrives there, it's still within the, the, the land of Equestria. I don't know if Counter Creek, appear, uh, Counter Creek appears in the map that has been released uh, after Season 2, but you can arrive there by train, meaning that they must get news of uh, of Canterlot, etc. And they are, they are not ponies, but they are four-legged hoofed animals. And uh, like the buffalo in... in Obra Barrel, it, oh God, that is the other thing, is that this comic has so many inconsistencies and so many problems, it actually makes me appreciate Obra Barrel a lot more. Mm. Because at least they actually explain what the, character, what the motivations of the characters are. Let, let's talk about the next page where, they are, right. where the, we have the bulls uh, uh, gathering up on their campsite. And they are talking about why they want to get their, ha- their hoofs on uh, Rancho Bronco. And it boils down to, ah, money, power. <laughs> yeah, they want to be in charge. Although, I will say, here's one other positive for the comic. A little bit of self-referential humor. Oh, no, here comes the monologue. <laughs> it's uh... time for a villainous monologue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah though, that is kind of like the, the, the style of w- winking to the audience humor that I hate <laughs> so much. It's like, oh, suddenly the comic is self-aware. The comic mm. knows that it's a comic. Oh, look at that. It's Pinkie Pie saying, hey, you cannot do that. This is a comic for children. Mm. It's, it, is, mm. it is that kind of thing that I hate. Because when something is uh, dumb or silly or it has silly elements to it and it starts acknowledging them, it kind of loses all the enjoyability for it. Yeah. Like it's, it's if suddenly in Pacific Rim... Somebody goes, ha-ha, ha-ha, he, he's going into the Shatterdome to ride on Gypsy Danger because Marshal Pentecost told him, ha-ha, get it? It's <laughs> symbolic and funny because it's so silly. Oh, that will ruin the movie. Uh, mm. However, this, this, they, they don't do that. And because it's so straight, it's more enjoyable. This, that kind of humor, it, it kind of breaks me. It's like, oh. You don't need to do this thing. Well, I I think this is personal for you on a personal level. It is, it is. It is totally personal. But I I do like that last panel there where he says, very easy, that fire in his eyes, that shading, that colouring, it's it's really awesome. It it looks good. It looks good. And Mm -hmm. when we turn a few pages, like, oh my god, what the... (laughs) Well, he does look more threatening than he does on the cover. Mm, True. There's something. Also, oh, you, men- you mentioned you uh, mentioned over a barrel. There's yeah. a on the next page where they go. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, mm-hmm. there's a portrait of what looks like Chief Thunderhooves in the background. I, <laughs> I just noticed that. Yeah. 
There's not a lot to really say about this scene, I think. Just that they talk a lot. They talk a lot. There is a lot of exposition. But for a moment, I want to go back to what you were saying, Norman, Mm -hmm. is that... um, Remember when we were talking about the good things mm-hmm. and that we liked? I didn't mention the artwork of Andy uh, of Andy Price, mm-hmm. and I didn't mention the artwork of, of Andy Price for a reason. Is that I I I have a lot of issues with the art in this uh, in these comics, mm-hmm. and the most important of all is the way that they draw the big, the the bad guy, the way that they draw Longhorn. Now, I am all for over-the-top bad guys and over-the-top villains with their expressions. I mean, look at Queen Chrysalis. Mm-hmm. Y- you cannot more over-the-top than those giant teeth <laughs> and her super angry facial expressions. But with, Lon- but with Chrysalis, there is at least a re- uh, relatability. You know her motivations. You know what moved her to be like this. And she is dealing with the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Mm-hmm. It's kind of justified that she has to have those faces. Longhorn doesn't have... That justification and the way that he's drawn every time his face is on a panel from the very first time that we see him, like those faces, that is madness, that kind of like he's so he's hateable and it's not enjoyable the the way he, uh, so hateable he is. And that appears in every it appears at the end of this panel. It appears in the next one when. Uh, he sets the barn on fire and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry for it. And I'm like, this is so over the top. It's not, this is not Tim, Tim Curry over the top mm. or uh, Christopher Walken over the top. This is kind of like Aston Catcher trying to imitate those guys being over the top and completely falling on his face. I, oosh. Mm. Uh, let's, let's move on to the part where he sets the barn on fire. Let's, yeah. let's, let's. Yeah. Well, <sighs> well, he sets so. the barn on fire, yeah, and there is, and there is much panicking except for our two resident magic users. Where Rainbow has to say, "Hey, a little help," and I'm like, <sighs> "Wait, they weren't helping? Were they just sitting back?" And then when they magic a uh, water Tower. silo, mm-hmm. water t- is it a silo? Yeah, a silo a work, tower yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Well, they, they, they bowl it over, they humiliate Rainbow, and then they're so proud of themselves as they hoof bump. And, mm. I, and I was on Applejack's side when she calls Twilight out, you used magic to fix that just now. Uh, before you, we pass that, before we pass I that. Didn't, I didn't stop him. Shrug. <laughs> uh, shrug, be, the shrug. Before we move on past that, like, looking at the scene where the barn's on fire... When reading through everything, like thinking and thinking, and looking at what Longhorn did, to me that was despicable, even for any villain in the MLP universe. Like, this, this, if you take a look, see Pinkie Pie? No, that's not Pinkie Pie. If you take a look, see, this was beyond. This is beyond evil. It, it, it is evil. It is evil, but this is beyond this comic. Like, if you were yeah. to read this, like, oh god, like, no, no, I know, I know what you mean, Norman. Especially when uh, after what Booby Kurno said that this is a parody, this is supposed to be um, uh, a, farce. a farce, exactly. Th- that this is supposed to be a farce. The way that they draw the f- the, the barn on fire, those those over dramatic uh, oranges and reds and yellows with such uh, emphasis on the inks and the shadows. And it, is, it, it looks like something you would expect from a Clint Eastwood movie, a, a serious Clint Eastwood western that is about, I don't know, a dying family that is fencing off a bunch of thugs. And this has nothing of funny. There is no hilarity going on here. And Applejack's reaction, she's almost like screaming like Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. It's like, it's so long horn. And it's like, this is high stakes level of drama going on here. There isn't, there isn't anything, there is nothing funny on this. What? I'm not laughing at this. I'm actually really crossed. Honestly, what the hell? Honestly speaking, from my emotional standpoint here, if I was in this situation, like, I would have been fist clenching and shaking and ready to put up a fight, like just deck this guy out. Like, yeah, seriously, like, like, a, if, like Applejack. No, yeah. but I, I would have done it. Well, like, if, no, 
screw the law. I, I screw the law. I have money. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but no, this, that's the thing. Is like speaking of the law, since we are bringing so much paperwork on the on the next pages discussion and so much about bureaucracy and uh, going with legal statements and that there is at this point there is no reason for Longhorn to face legal actions against himself and uh, against him and putting him in jail. He set a property that is not his on fire. Hell, yeah. even if you set your own property on fire, you will go to jail because yeah. you cannot set a property on fire. Yeah, it mean, is illegal. Technically, if you're going to go for the law, what he did, like law, if we're going by law base, like he stole or he robbed ponies in daylight. That is already what um, assault, uh, assault and robbery, burglary? and yeah, burglary, and, no, uh, and, robbery. And bad. And battery. Yeah. And also, yeah. Oh, a fellow of the law, like well, uh, office of the law, and also burning down uh, private property, that's arsonist to that. Like, he would have gone to jail for at least 20 years or more. Well, here's, this is where people responding to my YouTube review bring up some, something for at least consideration. I don't agree with this, but mm-hmm. I, I should give it voice. Uh, this one uh, user, fellow fan, said Longhorn has plausible deniability. How? He, a question I asked as well, but he, <laughs> no one sees him like the barn on fire. <laughs> He's just right next to it as it's on fire. Um, uh, and then, he... and then, uh, what was it? Later on, I'm jumping ahead a little bit when, but when the, they're driving the cattle through the town and destroying everything, mm-hmm. she's, this person makes the uh, comment, well, he can just say that he was there as it was happening, but he wasn't the one causing it. And I, and then I, I don't, I'm not swayed by this argument because there are multiple scenes where he's flat out telling people, uh, in his first appearance, what did he, what did he say to the ponies? Fill up the bags. There you go. Fill the saddlebags with all the food, water, and whatever else that'll fit in them. Hurry it up and, and no pony else gets hurt. Uh, There's no plausible deniability there. That uh, is out and out threat. Uh, okay, uh, I, I can understand this yeah. user standpoint. Not only here. that, but you, they, they, they are seeing your face and all that. It's like you cannot avoid being seen doing this. And I can understand the user's point of view where, okay, for the barn on fire, there's no proof that he did it. He could be there at the time it was burning, yet the flame in front of him, like if you see that stick in front of him, that's evidence. But no, okay. Probably he was the one, he, oh, he was there looking at it. And then with the whole stampede, like, oh, I was riding on my goat and it happened. Like, ooh. You know, this there is, well, there are two arguments against that. I am going to mention a, uh, I'm going to mention a movie that kind of does this same thing. And it's also as annoying as this one. But he's running away on his goat, laughing his butt off. That guy is guilty. Yeah, but... I don't care if nobody saw him setting the barn on fire and this guy is guilty. It reminds me of one movie called In the Bedroom <laughs> uh, starring Tom Wilkinson and C.C. Spacek about uh, there is a murder and the guy gets away with it because they don't see him pull the trigger but they find him next to the body with a gun on his hand but because they didn't see him pull the trigger he gets away with it. Mm. Now, that is bullcrap. Because there is, a, there is a branch of investigation called forensics mm-hmm, true. that will totally find the fingerprints or whatever else on that gun. Now, I know st- I'm not saying that Equestria has a branch of forensics, but since we are bringing legality and documents and talking about you know uh, ownership and other uh, bureau- bureaucracy crap that this comic doesn't need, Mm-hmm. You can totally bring up the fact that yeah, let's do an investigation. Let's find if the if there are some uh, skin cells on <laughs> on that on that branch or like. No, seriously, at this point, it's not out of the question. The comic has reached uh, its it, its ridiculous level. Well, anywho, let's try and speed it up because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're harping okay. on details at this point. We are harping. Okay, but if I may, if I may, plow forward. Uh-huh. Okay, we get our fun pop culture references at the town meeting. Now, I okay, show show of hands on the internet podcast. Ha ha. <laughs> who didn't get the Blazing Saddles reference? I haven't I mean, watched it, but I still know who it was. Okay, that's I, good. Well, please do watch it. Yeah. You, 
You'll do Same yourself here. a treat. But Sassy Perilla. I don't know who who is Sassy Perilla. She I know this this is enough to say yes, this is a reference. I know it is a reference, but I don't know what it's referencing. I think it's just a word play on Sasparilla. Really? And I, they call her Sassy. Be, I feel like it should be more, but who knows. Mm. But okay, uh and then as I referenced earlier, Longhorn and company drive more cows. Poor cows get it so poor in this. Uh... Actually, they're not cows. They're bulls. They're all bulls. They have horns. Yeah. But uh, the poor bovine Hello? residents are are harassed. Yes. And still Longhorn. They're... Okay, China shop, nice visual gag. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. I, actually, that was actually funny. That We've was must a good have busted it. <laughs> and, and then also, uh, Longhorn calls them calls them ladies. We well, <laughs> just saw in the previous panel. Yeah, they have udders. <laughs> they have udders, mm -hmm. it, but they also have horns. I thought female cows didn't have horns. I thought they knew, but not huge ones. Well, well whatever. Well, it's utterly amazing. <laughs> you, but. But then we reach yet another moment of Grand Twilight characterization where she assures the sheriff that it's just stuff. And oh, yeah. <laughs> again, again, a lot of what I've read from fellow fans who are trying to defend this comic, Applejack's barn gets destroyed all the time. <laughs> yep. And it's you know what? Stuff. And you know what? They treat that as a bad thing. I, I seem to recall Applejack breaking down in tears during Apple Family Reunion because the barn got destroyed. Well... Yeah. yeah. Or, or what about what about Twilight? Don't worry. That bookworm eat all your books. It's okay. It's just stuff. Oh, Twilight! Your library got blown up into pieces in the season four finale. Don't worry. It's just stuff. Well, now, you she, see, <laughs> she accepted it, yo. Like she accepted it. She accepted the fact that her library got blown up, <laughs> and then kicked all kinds of ass. Yeah. 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 She like she she went to town. To destroy this guy because it blew up her library. You don't want to know what will happen if some some of her friends gets murdered. Oh wow, you're going to unleash hell. Like why at Earp? Nothing compared to Twilight. Uber badass. Uh, but yes. no, that yeah, it's like that is very heartless of Twilight uh, to just ditch it as if it was stuff. That was things that belonged to the to the police in town. Mm -hmm. It was their lives. Well, here's the thing. We we say at least no one was hurt as a consolation mm -hmm. of this is a tragedy, but thank goodness no one was hurt. Find that silver lining. Twilight is just saying it. This is her words. It's fine, Tumbleweed. That's not reassurance. That's dismissal. <sighs> and the law of unintended communications. And even if we don't reference past episodes or comics... Tumbleweed shoots her down in the next panel, saying, it's the fact that I need help in the first place that's the problem. Look at what these bullies have done to this town and what they'll keep doing if we don't cave. This is desperation. This is also why it's not a parody. This is super serious. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If you look at his face, he's completely broken about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, let's move on because this is getting depressing. Well, is yes. that, well, well it, it's it, a depressing it, comic. It is a depressing comic, and it doesn't get any better because on the next panel, he actually, Twilight is like, don't worry, it will get better in the morning. In the morning, it doesn't look better. And again, th I wasn't laughing. That was supposed to be like, it, it is delivered like a joke. It is delivered like a, like a, uh, uh, like a, a verbal change, verbal joke, but I wasn't laughing. I was like, oh my god, this is horrible. It does look worse. It is terrible. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to put a positive spin on things where, okay, it's funny, haha, but like, um, who's the sheriff again? I don't, I don't, yeah. uh, tumbleweed. Yeah, tum Tumbleweed, it's, he's depressed because, oh, town looks bad. But you know what? They're working together and uh, putting, um, well, they're working together to bring it back to its glory. But, uh, like, oh god, no, like, their plans, oh god, no. Someone... And then Twilight's plan, and let's yeah. talk about Twilight's plan, because this one deserves to be talked about. Oh, cool. Like, uh, cool. we, we, we cannot, we cannot move any further before talking about Twilight's plan. Let's yeah. talk about it. Could we do it well, fast, like, please? Okay, Here, here's really my, 
my only two things to really say about it. one twilight's way too proud of her naming i mean people are saying oh she's teaching the town to stand up for herself by not using magic she's not teaching anyone in this she's making a funny name uh so that that argument falls flat for me the second is why syrup is tar not kid friendly apparently no i believe mm. tar is flammable so basically they're flammable so they they actually make it a point to have a little more wink at the audience. Uh, caution, incredibly cheap grade of syrup is highly flammable. Go figure. Go mm. figure. Oh, okay. So if the goal is to have the bulls make it through no matter what and get lit on fire and look re- really terrifying, why not just say tar? Why, why, why make this syrup joke when tar is all you need? Probably... I- I probably don't want this to bring is up, up, yeah. no. probably this know. is one of Hasbro's mandates saying that's too not safe for kids, so we need to tone it down a bit. So this could be one of those situations. But lighting well, things on fire? They're on fire. Ooh. Well, you know, light it's it funny. Up, 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 light it up, light up, it up, up. I'm, I'm recycling my jokes. I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it, I just had a funny thought. Now I can imagine the kids trying to, like, syrup their pancakes and trying to set them on fire. It's like, yeah, I'm into a flambe cupcake. Come, pl- pancakes. Ah, ah, mom, it actually does set me on fire. Ah. <sighs> God, what a stupid idea. Right after they get set on fire, despite all the fire and the syrup and the feathers and the everything and the barbed wire, they still ransack the town and... Yeah, if it wasn't clear before that this wasn't a parody or a farce, this one finally settles it. Like, if 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 the sheriff didn't look heartbroken before, now he looks like he just wants to look for a, for a rope and, like, put it on a, on a beam and dancing at the end of it because he looks so... Dis- he, he looks desperate. He looks hopeless, heartbroken. He throws the he throws his sheriff star on the on the ground, and he's like, "I give up." Not even that. That was that was horrible. That feels that feels awful, no, especially even... because I well, I, I like this character. I I like the character of Sheriff Silverstar. I like this guy. Yeah, I mean, but not even that. I... Take a look, see at Dream. Oh, sorry, take a look, see at Applejack. Like her face is like, oh god. She's broken as well. Everybody is heartbroken. And in the meantime, Twilight is was so super happy about her trap, not realizing that these are Pony's lives that we are talking about. And remember when I said Pinkie Pie is not my favorite character? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pinkie, Pink, Pinkie just made things worse. She even says, I made it worse. I made it worse. Uh, and then we have the final shot where Applejack... This is what makes her the hero of this story, Shh, heroine, whatever. Uh, mm. I find it strange that we have to add a gender differential. <laughs> yeah, same she, here. She, she takes up the, the sheriff's badge and says, I'll save Cantor Creek. It's the last thing I do. This is what makes her the champion. She is giving it 100%. When Twilight says, we're with you, well, you're not. Yeah. Because you're giving it 50%. <sighs> you're giving it 25%. You're giving you're, it 5%. You're playing <laughs> Applejack's doing chasing a goal. You're playing a game, and there's yeah. the difference is night and day, and it ju- yeah. and yeah. And here's the thing, guys. In the I talked about that this comic expo had me thinking about the fandom. Mm-hmm. When I first reviewed this, just typed up a little journal review of it. I just said, this comic highlights why having a magic user in the group can really make things difficult. You know, you have, you have that question of why don't they just solve it? And you got to be careful with that. And that was how, and I just said, I hope the next comic does better. Then mm-hmm. I went online to Equestria Daily and uh, to other forums where people were defending Twilight. And they were th- throwing out all manner of justifications. And yeah. it's inverted. The more they tried to defend it, the more wrong. I thought Twilight was the more yeah. I became against her, and I I don't the, want to call, call individuals out, but there were so many logistics that Twilight, a princess and defender of the land, doesn't have the jurisdiction. That uh, that a pony who, as a unicorn, lifted an Ursa Minor, doesn't have the strength to hold five bulls. 
mm-hmm. or to transport mm-hmm. them, or that they'll bre- they're so strong they'll break down any barrier, as we'll see easier, in the second. Or, or, so, but easier yet, as someone who is in direct contact with Princess Celestia, who is actually in the next issue this is brought up, but it's like, at the end of the comic I was like, can you just send a letter to Spike, tell him, you get your butt out of that Star Trek convention and tell Princess Celestia that we no. have a situation here. Genius. And this is not about a cider making competition or anything like that. This is actually serious. We're speaking about ponies' lives here yeah. that are at risk. Yeah, James, you don't need to do you don't need to bother Spike at his convention. You could just do it yourself and send a letter direct to Celestia. She will respond. Uh, uh, th- there is oh, go ahead, go ahead. And spoilers, that's what Twilight kind of does. She does <laughs> She does go to Cantor a lot without mm. Spike. But it, it, is, it, it, it is true what you say, Silver, that sometimes you do have an issue when you have a powerful magic user in the group because it's like magic is the, th- is the thing that, huh, it's magic. I don't have to explain anything. <laughs> that no. is why some of the best arcs in this comic either take good advantage of Twilight as a magic user or they don't have Twilight at all. Like, I, I did like what they did with Twilight in the pirate arc, um, in that she's a very no-nonsense leader, mm-hmm. and I like that in the Diamond uh, uh, okay, main Hatan arc, mm-hmm. Twilight is nowhere to be seen. And that will be another issue where, oh, Twilight, why don't you just use your magic to reveal the real culprit? I can't, because I have to let the police do their work. You don't need Twilight in that situation, mm-hmm. and the writers True. knew that. This uh, one, however... And also, anyone who tries to defend Twilight in this situation, I'm gonna—I'm not going to say names either because I didn't check. But I need to call you out on this one. You guys are delusional. <laughs> You're uh, just trying to defend the character because you really like the character, and you don't well, want to see that she's really written out of character. Well, well, th- th- that's one other thing I wanted to touch on. I, I don't mean to go on tangents here, but it's kind of important. Mm-hmm. There are two things. Know. Two more things at play. One is the defense of the Alicorn Prime Directive, that, oh, no. that an Alicorn cannot directly intervene. You cannot force harmony upon others. Mm. Now, there's a couple of things wrong with that. One, someone needs to have a talk with Princess Cadence and her use of the love spell then. Uh, just putting that out. Mm. You can't have harmony if someone's destroying your home either. So if you mm. can't have harmony one way, you can't have harmony another way, I think you have a right to interact. The second thing is that... This, well, it is Star Trek. They're making a Star Trek reference, even without the Pony <laughs> Trek joke for Spike. The uh, whole point of the Prime Directive is that throughout the show, P- the characters made a moral choice to break the rule because it, they felt it was the right thing to do. That you can't just ignore the plights of others for the sake of a rule. And this is a concept that extends to biblical times. Not to go all not to go all biblical on you guys, but um, no, no, it's fine. Have, have you have you ever heard the tale of the Good Samaritan? Uh, sorry, mm. no, no, I okay. might not have. Please illustrate us. Okay, the basic story is that a man is robbed and beaten on his way to Galilee, holy city, and or no, Galilee is not the holy city, but he's on his way. He gets mugged, and he lies. And two holy men, a priest and a Levite, walk past him. But a good Samaritan, uh, which in back in the day, saying a good Samaritan is like saying the good drug dealer or the good terrorist. <laughs> they were they were a they were a rival tribe. All they right. were the bad okay. they were the bad guys. He stops, helps the guy, takes him home. He is the man's brother for helping him. I love this story because there's things that you don't know. One of the rules for priests and Levites is that they weren't allowed to touch other people on their way to the holy city. And that's where these guys were going. They put the rules over the well-being of another person. But the justified one, the good Samaritan, good terrorist, good drug dealer, etc., didn't focus on the rules. He helped a person in need. And that's why he comes out as the justified, the good guy. And now Samaritan is a positive term in modern times. Mm. Apply that here to Twilight. She is prioritizing the rules over the needs of others and that is so not twilight if i don't really like the crystal empire two-parter but the one thing i took away as a positive when push comes to shove 
Twilight chooses ponies over the rules. True, true. I mean, we. Sorry, you we, are the one who has to take the the crystal heart to Princess to Princess Cadence. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, yeah, like she drops the 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 whole test thing, and even before that, she's actually kind of taking care of everyone. She's still kind to Spike. She still cares for uh for her friends. She's. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure one of her biggest motivations to bring back the crystal heart is to help Cadence stop suffering from using her magic all this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Go ahead. So the the point of the Prime Directive, the Good Samaritan, and Twilight, all of them are top, touch the issue of adherence to a rule versus adherence to morals. Mm. And the justified ones seem to choose morals over the rules. <laughs> and that's, that's where this comic is almost offensive. But, uh, James, as you say about people are just sort of twisting their perspective to, ju- to protect Twilight... I, I do sometimes during these arguments, I just sort of boggled as people would come up with these reasonings. But it also made me think, what's the, been the big theme with Twilight lately? Um, that she has wings and uh, available from nine ninety nine now from Hustle <laughs> Store. Exactly. And we get mad. Yeah. She yeah. gets wings. We get mad. She gets uh, a, a love interest. We get mad. We get uh, mad. She get, she gets a new castle. We get mad. She really? gets the first commercial of, uh, you know, the, oh, we've seen her grow into a princess role. People get mad because they think it's the Twilight Sparkle show. Oof. She's been the center of so many controversies lately. I can almost understand that people would defend her on reflex mm-hmm. just because it's, we're tired of Twilight hating. But yeah. there's a difference between standing up for the character you like this this is not the character I like. This is a gross no. re- misrepresentation. Mm. Totally, because even when, when she was selling the castle, even when she was given wings, even when she was given a love interest, there is still that uh, lovely, dorky, completely adorable bookworm of a unicorn alicorn girl that is so clever, so smart, and so dedicated to her friends that you cannot do anything but love her. And she did that in the season three finale. She was like that all the time in the season four premiere. Um, she was just during all of season four. She was, I hate using this word, but she was really nice. Hmm. And that is the thing is that Twilight is a nice character. And she's nicer now that she's a princess. And to see her acting like this, it, it I'm not going to speak for you, but for me, it breaks my heart. Yeah. I mean, with overpowered characters like, Twilight here, especially like, like you said, um, she has power. Right, it is zap zap, the job done, and they have to put this contrivance of uh, prime directive, blah blah blah. I mean, I've seen some overpowered characters in other fictions, and what I notice is most of those characters either evil or lazy. They do whatever they want when they feel like it, so. The excuse is like, ah, help us, help us. And he'll say, not in the mood, do it yourself. And like, oh God, everybody has to do stuff. And he'll be the jerk. He'll be that character. And well, Twilight here is the jerk. Well, and since we're in this, let's jump onto issue 26 and last of this arc. Oh, um, well, we already started talking about uh, the problems with uh, Twilight and how she justifies what she's doing, but now this is when, this is when the okay. Let's talk about this because the comic starts. We have a little summary of what happened in issue twenty-five, mm-hmm. and we see Longhorn filing up the legal rights to own Rancho Bronco. And okay, you guys take it. I cannot. Legality okay. and bureau. I deal with bureaucracy and legality all the time because banks, Spain, yeah. rece- recession. I have enough. I don't want that in my comics. So, okay. you guys take it. Well, actually, before we get into the um, to the legality, we, we start with a one page sort of sum up from a prospector pony or some such, just cooking chili. <laughs> okay, if that if that's chili, there better not be meat in it. That's all I'm saying. Hey, it's a vegetarian Tuffle. version. Tuffle. But, anyway, <laughs> but there's this one panel where he says, well, to be fair, it wasn't a very good plan. A fence and some maple stirrup is hardly going to stop a full-grown steer. Steer, not bull. Okay. Uh, 
this is something that even in the TV show I don't like. Admitting you haven't, you've, the story doesn't make much sense or that you haven't utilized something properly, that doesn't make it better. Yeah. And it's not, not inherently funny. It's funny when Twilight says, how did I miss that with in uh, It's About Time? Because, you know, it's just sort of goofy. And they move forward. This one is just admitting our heroines were idiots. And despite Applejack's uh, dedication that she'll save the town, her first act in the comic is to try and get Tumbleweed to take his job back. And he wants to change his name to Honky Tonk. There's that naming versus nurture trend again. (laughs) (laughs) But anywho, Longhorn, he files for ownership of Rancho Bronco with the notary. How... And pe- pe- people have noted frontier justice, that it's very different from modern justice. Okay. But I have I don't know a lot about frontier justice, but I have a hard time believing that you can break, smash up a town and then turn around and say, oh, I want to file for ownership legally. I'm pretty sure someone can file a counterclaim. Yeah. Usually, oh. you are not the thief that goes and says, Hi, I want to open an account in this bank that I just tried to rob three weeks ago. Yes. <laughs> Longhorn is great muscle. He'll tear stuff up. Great, fine. That's his role in this story. And as as Norman said, I almost kind of hoped Tumbleweed would be the shadow uh, puppeteer trying to get the ranch for himself because that's what the good villain does. He has an underling cause the trouble so he can take advantage Mm -hmm. and he has the plausible deniability in fact the fact that uh tumbleweed got smacked by longhorn would be a great cover story well i can't i can't be in league he hit me now rainbow wants to tear up the claim and i i here's the funny thing i actually do support twilight that you can't just tear up a legal document for convenience no, you can't. yeah that, i agree you cannot do that you can actually get in a, into a world of trouble if you try to win that not to mention you are now resorting to the same tactics as your opponents yeah and if you're not better than him what's the point mm-hmm. but their plan is to lie oh. and to move <laughs> other people's stuff and to basically and to kidnap <laughs> And to kidnap that 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 game that was unexpected, yeah. Uh, so here, so you're defending the law on one front, and Twilight is swearing to adherence to a law, but then they're breaking five, five other laws. Uh, talk about hypocrisy. So now, to be honest, I feel like we can kind of blaze through. Let's please let's do. We can kind of blaze through these parts where they trick the bulls with ventriloquism and fake ghost stories because it's just fun. It's Looney Tunes. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's comical. Yeah but, yeah, but like you say in your review, uh, it's comical when it comes from the bad guys. These are the good guys. It's Yeah. They, yeah. When, when they keep screwing up and are 12 feet short, they measure things in feet, okay? Uh, yeah. So weird. <laughs> It, the heroines are supposed to be smarter than this. And again, it's not funny if I think our heroines are idiots. Mm. I mean, good comedy is less stupid people dealing with more stupid people. Yeah. Not everyone being stupid. Exactly. Uh, if Bucks Bunny was the stupid one, every time he tries to fence off Elmer Fudd, then he won't be as likable as he is. As he is. Mm. Now, I will, I will credit, Pinky gets... Wow, she looks creepier than Chrysalis when she talks about ghost, ghost stories. <laughs> that that I want to talk about that for a minute because that's Please. when the comic, that's when the artwork took one torpedo to the floating line to me. That's when I said, not even the artwork can save this comic. Like, I'm sorry, Andy Price. I'm sorry, Heather Breckle, but I have to call you out on this. What the hell is wrong with Pinky Pinky's face in this panel? Like she looks like a Picasso. I don't know what is wrong with those eyes, the face. The shading, but to me, from that point on, it's like okay, not even the com, not even the artwork can save this comic. That is terrible. Like the way that those eyes are placed, they are super weird, and it's it freaks me out and it weirds me out for all the wrong reasons. Mm. It's not. It's up to me. It's not even funny. It's like, what is wrong with this? Oh my god, what is wrong with your face? Moving on. 
Yeah, really what hard. follows is like three or four attempts of let's move the stuff. Oh, we didn't move it enough. Let's move it again. We we didn't move it enough. Let's move it a third time and have the bulls go gaga with Fluttershy because she's so cute. She is. <laughs> That's so true. Yes, I, mm. I will defend this, the comic on this point. There will be no disagreeing that Fluttershy is cute. I know. Yeah. yeah. Also, Her in the also, Milmer outfit, like, yee! It is, it is funny how Longhorn doesn't, re- doesn't get any fleshing out, yet the bulls, the, the, the thugs that go with Longhorn, they are almost kind of likable on that part. They are like, oh, wow, they are so funny, and they are so taken by Fluttershy's cuteness. That is actually a very adorable moment. I was like, yeah, that is a, yeah. that makes me happy. Thank you, you know what, for G- reacting like that. You want to know why, James? Why? Because they have character. They have characteristics that defines them. Mm. But, okay, after they have finally moved the, the, the camp enough times, then Longhorn goes to claim Rancho Bronco, which is, right now is getting painted for some reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally is the time that is the moment where the sheriff finally stands up against Longhorn, tells him to go away. Which and Longhorn replies with, oh, yeah. Not before Longhorn decides to empty an entire bucket of paint on his head. And I... Where is my wood chipper? I want to throw this guy in there. This is this no wait technically doesn't this considered as assault on a equestrian citizen Twilight law enforce not just no, no, no. that he's but not a, a law he's enforcement not a, officer he's not a law enforcement officer that role went to Applejack who should arrest him right now yeah yeah although I noticed you're not upset that he kissed Rainbow Dash oh who, no because Rainbow well, Dash. I don't I don't I don't mind that, don't well, mind that. They, they, you know what they say about Rainbow Dash she ships with everyone that's right. Where's that, kitchen, where's that kitchen sink? Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Now, when she's, now, when she's yanking Rarity by her mane. Oh, I mean, yes. Okay, <laughs> any, anyone who's had their hair pulled knows that hurts. That, and not only that, but he's rattling her. Mm-hmm. And, okay, I have to bring something up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, I keep bringing these things up. But I, I really want to talk about that scene where, and the following scenes where uh, Longhorn starts. Uh, making my favorite pony suffer. <laughs> I have always defended that your favorite characters should always suffer. Mm-hmm. Because, f- for two reasons. One, to tone down their ego and give them a lesson in humility. Like, in, uh, uh, in simple ways. Mm-hmm. For example. Or, for the purpose of the story, so you can give them an arc and they can get up after being beaten into the dust. Like in Rarity Takes Manhattan. Those are the two reasons where I justify my uh, your favorite character's suffering. Because it makes sense for the story. This is just plain and uh, uh, assault, plain and simple. There is no justification, no reason for that. So it gets to the point that not even the abuse towards Rarity is enjoyable. Here comes... Okay, here, here's where... If we're going to be play by the law... Applejack's the sheriff now. She noticed the assault on Rarity, her friend. And why Applejack's not stopping this? Why is not using the law? Doing anything. Yeah. Or punching the guy. She, As we saw in Friends Forever 8, mm-hmm. she... Yeah. Uh, I, I know we haven't reviewed it yet, but she curb stomped those guys. Oh, yeah. And, oh, my God. You bring that up. Okay. How intimidating can these guys be if they can get beat up by two ponies, and one of the ponies is Rarity. Hey, Rarity is no Kung Fu, yo. Yeah, 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 I know, but it, it, it's, it's, it's the girliest girly, of, girly girl of the show, that regardless yeah. of how badass she can get to be. <laughs> yeah, she's not weak, but she's not inclined to violence, but even then. I'm starting to wonder in Dragon Quest how much of a chance those teenage dragons really would have stood. <laughs> oh, it would have been murder. I have seen fanfics. Man. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I've played Bayonetta. Ah, uh, but, but here we go. The Here, here we come to what I consider to be the point that, that shatters any justification for Twilight. She comes in, has a fully notarized document making this a historical site. Okay. Using the law to subvert the villains. That's actually... If it had stopped there, that'd be clever. That would be that would be Twilight being smart. 
Yes. If she said, I have to leave you guys, I know how to fix this, but I have to leave, hold down the fort as best you can. And then she comes back at the end to help save the day. That'd be yay Twilight. That'd be Twilight not just magical, but smart. But here, uh, they make it a historical website. Longhorn finally loses his cool, smashes the place, and now it's okay to use magic. Now it's okay to do what you could have done from page one. And at this point, if this was 2015 from Back to the Future, the comic will generate an, a holographic hand and it will slap you over the face. Hmm. Because that is basically a literary slap to the face of anyone who wanted to take this comic, at least with a bit of enjoyability or seriousness. Because, uh, yeah, I know, that is bull. That is bull. That is total bull. Uh, oh, and I forgot this. Uh, just, you know, people said, oh, Longhorn, the bulls are too powerful to just be contained. Well, here, here, here they are being contained. Yeah, they're, here they are being contained, contained by... The- yeah, by the same kind of wood that was smashed with a simple kick not a few panels ago. And even even more insulting is that they, this guy who has been trespassing, assaulting, attacking, kicking, punching, shoving, uh, doing all of those despicable things, who has shown little to no personality, uh, just gets thrown in jail, he- head-butted, and get thrown a bucket of paint to the face. Um, you know what? I'm not going to say George Lucas is an amazing writer, but he <laughs> threw the emperor through a ventilation shaft and exploded him in a bu- in a cloud of lightning and thunder. Mm-hmm. I mean, bad guys get killed, or at least they get their comeuppance. I'm not saying that an MLP villain should get killed, but look at what happened to look at what happened to Discord. Look at what happened to Tyrek. Look at what happened to Sombra. Oh Sombra my. got shattered into a million pieces. I'm not saying that you should shatter Longhorn into a million pieces, but at least doing something equivalent to that could help. I don't know. Throw him off a cliff. No, don't and do that. Have him... No, you can throw him off a cliff, having, tum... having him tumble down, <laughs> and then end at the, end, at the, at the, end for, at the at the bottom of the cliff with a cactus stuck on his butt or something like that. I don't know. Do something else, something something satisfying, something that justifies having a, a, a bill and written this way. Mm. Well, let's just say that Longhorn filled his saving role. Uh, oh, yeah. And then we finally come to the last page. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't mean to... Now... Here's one thing I, I didn't talk about the in my review, but I'm seeing it now, and it's just a fresh little pinprick. The next day, as uh, Applejack returns the star to Tumbleweed, and he, thank you for everything, Applejack. And all of her friends are in the background going, ahem, and craning their ears. I was like, I'm reading this, I'm thinking, what did you guys do? Yeah. What? Uh, what? Especially you, Twilight. Twilight, you did more to help the bulls. I mean, okay, grant, <laughs> granted, you, you, you had the legal solution at the end, props, but you ladies, this was not your shining hour. No. This, was a- this was Applejack giving it 100%. You guys were playing games. Especially and... Twilight, naming the trap that she was set in. Yeah. Mm. And then... All, when Applejack says, you know, call us so there's more trouble, well, so much for teaching the town to fend for itself. Uh, I'm sorry, that, that argument has been invalidated for me. And like I say, no one is even aware of what happened to, to Great Grand Uncle Chili Pepper. Nobody you cares. Hope, you hope he'll be okay, but uh, well, I, I like the Apple family all around. So uh, I'd, I'd like to know that, you know, they wouldn't forget their own kin being missing. <laughs> but th- but we finally reached my favorite word in this whole comic end and it ends uh, and it feels I, really good I will but I, I do have to bring up one other thing just one other little thing it's hardly worth mentioning but I'm going to mention it last, last panel look at Rainbow's Mane okay. I feel like the song Rainbow Dash always dresses in style should be playing Ooh, oh, wow. no, you're right. Oh, God, why? <laughs> she, it's been like that for most of the comic. It's like the, the, the straight, athletic 
has been, uh, for some reason, lost for a more feminine curl. Well, Rainbow Dash is trying something new, you know. Well, uh, you know, now that you mentioned that, my point reiterates, this comic is so bad that it not even the artwork can save it. Because when you start to find things to be care about a comic drawn by Andy Price, that is not a good sign. So now, now here's the burning question I want to ask. Up until now, we've said that Friends Forever number one, which we'll be getting to in due time, mm-hmm. we considered it sort of the low point because it had uh... a bad a bad story and bad, art, well, not great artwork. Uh, no, not great artwork. Yeah. Not great artwork. So it's like, what what do you do when there's not a great story and there's not great artwork? Well, you got to call it the low point. This comic has, by comparison, much better artwork, in my opinion. Mm. But if you're hurting the characters, I'd say Friends Forever number one, Pinky and Applejack came away as really good characters in that. That is true. You know so, what? I am going to... Oh, God. Go ahead. Ask it. Ask it. Which Which is the weaker comic? I want to go first with this one. Please. Go ahead, Norman. Uh, okay. If... I, I'm looking at the point of view where if you were to give someone who has not read any MLP comics or know very little of the show and you were to give them the comics and your options are Friends Forever number one and issues 25 and 26 of the comics, I would clearly say go for Friends Forever number one even though the art is questionable. The story is meh. But at least you'll get the general idea of friendship. With this one, you'll be turning them off really hard from the idea of My Little Pony being a good show. And honestly speaking, I, I, I don't know how to support the the good, the bad, and the ponies. Like This, oh, this issue really- broke me in terms of Andy Price, Katie Cook can never do wrong. Mm. You know, uh, to uh, to answer the question, for the fact that this comic came from that duo, who has given us so much, so much good stuff, I cannot find anything to defend on it. Like uh, on my Comicsology app, I rated the first issue with two stars and the second issue with one. Something that I have never done for any of the comics, because even with uh, Friends Forever number one, there is one thing. Well, there are a couple of things that I actually really like about that comic. And now that you mention it, you are right. Pinkie Pie and Applejack stay within character. The Cake family stays within character. Yeah, okay, the artwork is not good enough. But And I personally find a big connection with one of the characters in that comic. And for a straight personal reasons, I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure now that I think about it, because I will read it every now and then and have fun with it. This, this comic arc is way more insulting, not for the artwork, but for the way that it's written. This is something that you wouldn't... This is Katie Cook and Andy Price. They, they have given us... They made a story out of nothing. They took the story of Big Mac looking for a box of nails and turned it into Lord of the Rings. (laughs) They they destroyed so many different tropes about high school romance novels and romance movies with the Shane and Armor and Princess Cadence arc. And they have raised so many point and questions with the Reflections arc that these guys were doing so well. And then they do this. Uh, you, you know, so yeah. with, um, with this... Oh God, I lost my train of thought, but... Uh, with this, uh, co- sorry. No, it's like I, I thought Silver was going to say something uh, because he didn't uh, reply the answer. All right. <laughs> I, I haven't yet replied my answer, but as, please, please. as someone Go. who, as much as I appreciate well done artwork, I consider myself a storyteller at heart, and so it always does come back to the story. And while neither Friends Forever Number One or The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies really shines as a tale, Friends Forever Number One at least makes you root for the characters. You see them as good ponies. This yeah. comic is far more damaging. So, yes, I will say this may be the low point in the MLP comic franchise right now. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's the last low point. Yeah, I mean, guys, if... 
the worst yeah. is behind us. But technically, that, I, I that hope is, that, that, is, sorry. that is true. Uh, well, that, that is absolutely true. And I I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it because if I don't say it, I'm going to explode. So I have to say it right now. You know how sometimes uh, critics, reviewers, they will say, um, they will look at a movie or something and say, oh, I can do so much better than this. I look at this comic, at this arc, and I say, I have actually done better than this. Um, I am working with one of my clients and best friends on a comic book series called All the Palooza Tales from Equestria. And it's all Wild West comic, starring each one of the main six. We have done Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Fluttershy. We just finished the Fluttershy one. And they are Wild West comics. And I'm not saying that my artwork is better than Andy Price. Hell no. Not by far. But the writing is way better. Because at least it thinks out the universe... It considers the characters, and it doesn't write them out of character like in this one. So, this, I know it's sounding very smug, but seriously, guys, when something fan-made delivers something that is not causing so much controversy than something that is official, you have to rethink what you're doing. Yeah. Although, allow, allow me to paint an image that might restore some optimism to people. All right. Just this this little scenario popped into my head. Imagine uh, Katie Cook standing in the editor's office. Big guy, got a cigar in his mouth. There's a haze or sign him. Uh-huh. And he's looking at her, he's like, Katie, lots of folks are still dumping on Friends Forever number one. We need to increase sales. <laughs> so I want you to write the absolute worst story you can. I want it to go down as the worst possible story so friends will, so our fans will stop harping on Friends Forever number one and move on. And give it a year or two, and I'll have, like, uh, Ted Anderson do something more offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, Here, here's the thing. Why do I imagine him saying after that, get me a picture of Spider-Man? <laughs> That's right. And then get me a picture uh, of Spider-Pony. <laughs> oh, my God. I completely lost what I was going to say. Oh, oh my God. Um, <laughs> Ted Anderson. <laughs> Funny enough, he's actually... He's He's probably one of my favorite writers at this point. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. Um, all my cr- all my <laughs> words have been discredited. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> no, but you you do you do have to uh, uh, think for a moment uh, that these guys have been doing a lot of really good comics, and uh, sooner or later they were going to do a blunder. Mm-hmm. It happens to everybody. Even the most talented directors make a bad movie every now and then, or write a bad novel, or make a bad album, uh, or or make a bad piece of artwork. It happens to everyone. So with that is like I think the lesson we have to take of this comic, the, this arc is, uh, don't ditch what's coming next, which is another Katie Cook and Andy Price comic, uh, and keep yourself open-minded. Just consider this one hopefully the the first and last blunder they will have, or at least one of the few. Mm-hmm. One of the few. That's sometimes all we can ask for. Well, yeah. what do they say about good directors, James? Uh, I forgot. The fact that they cannot always stay good, and that sooner or later they are going to make their um, the the one movie that is kind of a blunder, like uh, with Steven Spielberg, he made the Indiana Jones uh, and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, or Tim Burton making Dark Shadows. What is this Something kingdom like of the crystal skull you speak of? I know of no such thing. <laughs> Denial. I, I don't know what... You're talking crazy talk, Jane. You're talking uh, crazy talk. Stop being crazy. <laughs> but I, I, I remember I saw it and it had that annoying guy from Transformers in it. <laughs> I don't know or what you're talking was, about. I think I had a fever dream when I was like sick with the flu. Mm. Tr- truly, the ramblings of a madman. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cr- like crystal oh, skull, indeed. <laughs> yeah, In- mm-hmm. indeed. Yeah, yeah. Next, yeah, yeah. <laughs> next, you'll be telling me our hero survives nuclear explosions from refrigerators. Just absurd. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about the same time that George Lucas decided to take the story of Anakin Skywalker and made three movies out of it. Oh god, <laughs> I don't know. Go, ho- I didn't... go, ho- go home, James. You're drunk. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Or, or or that Star Trek movie with a Spock screaming can. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I think I definitely dreamt that one. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh god. But 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 
Anywho, okay. Uh, uh, in 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 fi- final thoughts and conclusions mm-hmm. on on this comic, like if we haven't had enough conclusion already, but I think just to wrap it up nicely, mm-hmm. I guess I'll I'll go first. Katie, Do the- you succeed. You succeeded in making the worst comic in this franchise. I'm proud of you, sister. You have friends forever. Number one can finally sell thanks to you. Now, <laughs> don't go your back. But I want you back in top form for next month's issue. Because it's about the Era Free Forest, and goodness knows there's some conversation about that. And give me so, pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> and pictures of Spider Man. So, still love you, but my God, when you want to make a tra- you want to make a travesty, you make a travesty. <sighs> oh, <Wah. you're> me. <laughs> <laughs> Penguins. What <laughs> easy time. <laughs> but, uh... But right, I've, mer- I've merged J. Jonah Jameson, the Penguin, and uh, <laughs> fifty other editors into one character. What? What Penguin? The one of Burg- Burgess Meredith Penguin or Danny DeVito Penguin? Uh, I'm gonna go with Adam West era Penguin. That's, that, that's Burgess Meredith. That's Mickey oh, from Ro- that's Mickey from Rocky being the Penguin. Can you believe that? Oh God. Oh, on on my side, like oh God. Whew. Well, okay. For me, my opinions. Okay, how do I put this? I usually, when we do reviews, I'm usually painted as the positive guy who likes everything. Like, hey, this is fun. This is good. Like, you guys are delusional. Come on, it's not that bad. And in this one, <laughs> I can't find anything. Like, I can't find anything. I'm the kind of guy who finds enjoyment in Tommy Wiseau's The Room. I I like that movie. It's a guilty pleasure. It's it's funny. It's so bad. It's funny. This one, like, uh, I got no idea. Like this one is hurting me mentally. I I saw Alone in the Dark in theaters, and this one hurts me. Uh, the. The final conclusion that I can reach here is that cowboys and pirates are were two of my favorite things when I was growing up, when I was a kid. Uh, I love being a pirate. Sky pirate, actually. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and a cowboy. Cowboy movies were my favorite thing. And I even kind of like the Lone Ranger. Yeah, the new one with the Johnny Depp wearing a crow on his head. Yeah, I even like that movie. And I can actually even try and make a case to defend it. I cannot make a case to defend this comic. I, I can't. I can try my best, but I can't. It's, uh, uh, for the most part, very pretty, but really insulting, bad representation of the genre. And when you misrepresent a, a, a genre that has given us tales like Tombstone, Unforgiven, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, like it's one of the cornerstones of cinema. It's one of the most easy genres to get right. Getting it wrong, it's uh, uh, unforgivable. But not so much. It is a bad comic. And we're going to leave it at the, uh, as that. That, let's hope, is just the, one of the few stones in the way of this wonderful duo of which I cannot wait to see another comic. Yeah. It's just one mistake. Mm-hmm. After right. giving us, after giving us one, two, three, four uh, story arcs, two micro comics, and one friends forever, I think we can allow them to have one mistake. Mm-hmm. A partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong season. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 need to, I need to see this. I need to see this. <coughs> with with this one, like, okay, it's bad. It's it's clearly bad. Like, we can't. Defend it. We we can't give a good rating on it. James, the guy who don't give numbers or give number ratings to a comic book, gave a two and a one. And yeah, I and remember, I love I love the reflection arc. I mm-hmm. defended that one with sword and cape. Mm-hmm. I and I still st- stand uh, beside it, saying that is one of the most ingenious comics that we have. Mm-hmm. I cannot defend this one. Yeah. This is this is how bad it is. Yeah. I cannot defend this one. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. And, and I personally, for me, the guy who is always positive and look at the bright side of life can't defend it. And Silver, with his powerful meh for Rainbow Dash, gave that one a meh. The worldwide meh. Yeah. 
And this one. Yeah, everybody gave the one. Um, the, give that one a man. Yeah, yeah uh, this one. Yeah, it's yeah. That that says you something. Not only that, Silver is super positive. When when you make your reviews, Silver, you are super positive about them. You are also very fair. And you said it in your video. You are finding it very hard to say good things about this comic. Mm -hmm. When you have one of the most optimistic and uh, 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 objective reviewers out there saying that, that can only tell you the kind of quality that is given. But mm -hmm. we are harping on it. Yeah, but, we but, are going to leave it as just yeah. one bad comic. But, but, but here's the thing. No matter how bad it is, this is only the first failure out of four that's available out there. I mean, how many things you said? Um, uh, more... four, of, four story arcs, mm -hmm. two micros, and one Friends Forever. But not only that, let's count all of the comics that have been released so far. We have 26 issues on the main series, uh, two annuals, one holiday special, 10 micros, and 13 Friends Forever. And this is the first one, the, this is the first one that we can actually say there is little to no there is next to nothing worth saving in this comic. There are comic book series that, that dream of having that good ratio. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here's the thing. No matter how bad it is, this is just only the first blender. Like, honestly, there's there can't be a perfect run. Like, people had issues with reflections. And, hey, uh, you're, granted, you have your opinions so be it and we have our opinions <coughs> on this one and apparently our point of view or uh, all three of us says this comic book was less Rather. than perfect <laughs> yes well, so you know people people may have uh, issues with reflections but they also have reflections issues <laughs> 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 but but anywho but anywho um yeah we're the, going to end up yeah, with the yeah. review of this one and well let's talk about what we're going to be going to review next week mm -hmm. because uh, right now, we have literally run out of comics on the main series to talk about. Oh, no. Like, this is the very last one. And so well, I now. say, for now, for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for now. Because uh, although I, I haven't checked the release date on the release date on the next uh, arc, mm -hmm. which again is going to be a two parter mm -hmm. uh, involving the Everfree Forest, like Silver said before. Mm -hmm. Wait, is uh, it a two parter? I got the impression it was a one shot. No, from what I heard, it's like, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be a one-shot or a two-parter, but I always have the feeling that right after a two-parter, another two-parter comes, like the same way they did with the big Macintosh and then the Shining Armor and Princess Cadence, Cadence arc, and then the Pirate arc arc, and then the the Bookworm. It's like mm. they have two-parter, two-parter, four-parter, two-parter, two-parter, four-parter, uh, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And... Sorry, I'm talking a lot. But yeah, next week, we are going to start reviewing the Friends Forever issues. Mm -hmm. So w what issue are you going to review then? Is well, <laughs> we, are going to, we have been talking about it all this time. So we're going to be talking about issue number one of Friends Forever, written by a completely new team. That mm -hmm. is uh, written by Alex De Campi with art by Carla Speed McNeil and colors by Jen Manly Lee and Bill Mudron. So it is completely full of newcomers. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that one when when we get the time to talk about that one. But for now, let's end today's review. Yep. Because, wow, we have been going for a long time, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to cover. Yep. Well, it's almost two hours on the clock. Have we, have we talked about this one more than about the reflection, the reflection arc? No, we talk positively on the reflection arc. I, I think it's about the same time. This one is a lot of... Uh, uh, well, well, well. Reflections was curious because while we talked about a lot of the concepts, we never really went through the story. <laughs> through that, this, yeah. this one was more direct. We yeah. we went through the story and struggled to find good things to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is that's a again, problem. Now that now that in conclusion, all of our concerns come from the heart mm -hmm. because we love these comics. And we want them to be as best as they can. True that. And when when they are when they are not. It hurts here. Mm -hmm. I'm poking my chest right now. It hurts here. But let's end it. let's end this for today. Unless you guys want to say something else. Of course. No, no. I need to edit this. I mean, Sweetie Bell needs to edit this. I mean, Sweetie Bell needs to edit this. You don't have to worry because I don't think we swore once. No, the Sweetie Bell needs to edit this. It's almost two hours. <laughs> I just Brr. hope my 
I just hope my cynicism wasn't uh, too big because even I will admit that yeah, uh, a couple of times I was going to be the one that thought. It's good. But anywho, take us out. Okay, well, this has been James Cork. And I've been Norman Sanzo. Hands in the air, or I'll review another bad comic. <laughs> uh, and I'm Silver Quill, man. <laughs> We're going to give Silver Quill some bird seed later on. <laughs> if we don't want him to be cranky all the time. Oh boy. Uh, see you guys on the next review. Bye bye. <laughs>